Today, we're unboxing and taking a look at the latest budget phone from Google. This is the Pixel 6a. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. Now, I'm really excited to see uh, what this phone has to offer for what is a really compelling price, coming in at just $449. Uh, as well as that, we have four different color options, uh, no, three different color options. Uh, we get the Sage, which is this light green color. And we also get the Chalk, which is this sort of uh, off-white color. And then finally, we have the Charcoal, which is the color that I have here today, which is this uh, really nice dark gray, uh, almost black color. You can see the gray tones come out when I angle it into the light and in the shade, it looks uh, a lot more darker. Also, I will be giving away this brand new pair of Google Pixel Buds A series. And if you want a chance to win, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment your favorite feature of the Google Pixel 6a, as well as your Instagram uh, username. Then follow me on Instagram, where I will announce the winner one month from now. All right, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at the phone here. Go ahead and lift it out of the box from this little pull tab. And again, this color looks good. Uh, first impressions off the, uh, right off the bat, it definitely feels uh, quite dense in the hand. Here we have that sticker on the front showing you where the uh, SIM slot is, your uh, underscreen fingerprint reader, USB-C port, volume and power toggles as well. Go ahead and peel that off. That is always satisfying no matter which phone it is. So here we go. This looks, uh, looks really nice. I have to say for the price, uh, definitely looks and feels quite premium. We get those aluminum edges here on the side, which feel nice and cold to the touch. Glass on the front, glass on the back as well. Uh, let's see what else is included in the box. So here we have a Pixel 6a Google Tensor. Uh, so it is pretty cool to see that this also has the Tensor chip, which is of course the same one uh, as from the Pixel 6 Pro. And uh, again, it still features that really unique uh, Google Pixel design with that sort of uh, camera bump here on the back and that two-tone finish. Uh, it really is quite recognizable uh, and I think looks quite good. So here we have the uh, SIM ejection, uh, ejection tool here. So a very small circular one there, interesting to see. And then I presume we have paperwork in here. We got a little uh, blue Google pamphlet, very simple, quick start guide, and a very thick little book. Uh, very small, but, uh, but thick little warranty information booklet. Uh, is that really necessary? I don't know, but they have sure included it. Uh, and then lastly, we have the USB-C cable, uh, which feels quite nice, actually. It has kind of a, a soft touch to it. Let's uh, take a closer look. You know, I always appreciate it when uh, manufacturers include decent quality cables uh, in the box, <clears throat> Apple. Um, and this cable here looks quite nice. Uh, again, has a nice sort of soft feel to the, tu uh, to the touch here. And then we have USB-C on both ends. Uh, it is a little bit on the shorter side, I would say maybe three feet or so. So manageable, uh, but definitely not above average in terms of length. And then lastly in the box, we do have an adapter, something that you will rarely find these days in phone boxes. Uh, we have a USB-A port on the back to USB-C. And this is great because uh, this means you will be able to use any older USB-A chargers uh, that you may have lying around. Uh, and also lets you use older USB-A cables uh, if you have those too. So nice of Google to include this in the box. All right, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the phone. So once again here, uh, let's just take a moment to appreciate the design. I really like it. Uh, it has a nice dense feel in the hand. Go ahead and power it on here. Uh, nice metal buttons as well, which feel uh, clicky. And uh, I like the metal frame that really feels good to the touch. And there we go as it boots up. So once again, we do have that Tensor chip, which is the same from the Google 6 Pro. Uh, so this should perform quite well. And one thing I'm really looking forward to testing uh, is Google's claims of over 24 hours of battery life uh, with the adaptive battery life feature, uh, which should adapt to how you use the phone over time and then adjust your settings accordingly to really allow you to get the most out of this device. Uh, so something I'm definitely going to be testing uh, for my full review. So be sure to subscribe to not miss that. Uh, as well as that, we also get intelligent photography. And of course, pixels are known for their incredible camera quality and more specifically, their computational photography with which they use AI to improve your photos. So that allows for tools like Magic Eraser, allowing you to remove objects from the background, uh, better night photography, 
and uh, according to Google, also very accurate skin tones. And then on the front here, we have that 6.1 inch OLED display. Now this is a 60 Hertz display. Uh, of course, you will have some phones that do have 120 Hertz, even at this price range. Uh, but if you're not used to 120 Hertz, uh, 60 Hertz should be just fine. We also get six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Now this should be enough for most. Uh, of course, Google is also big on pushing their cloud services. So 128 should be decent, uh, especially if you use things like Google's uh, Google Photos to uh, upload to the cloud. Now, one thing that I was a little bit disappointed to see uh, is that despite the glass back on the phone, we do not get wireless charging. So it should be capable of it, uh, but unfortunately that is not included in the box. Uh, speaking of which, the battery is 4,400 milliamp hours. So I think for the size phone, uh, as well as considering that this has that 60 hertz display, uh, that is a pretty beefy battery. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing how this phone performs. This is actually going to be my first Pixel phone. Uh, and I gotta say, I've heard mixed things about the Pixel line over the years. Uh, both good and, well, let's say bad. Um, so I'm gonna go into this with an open mind as I do with all of my videos. And I'm really gonna be curious to see how this thing performs to really uh, test all of the key aspects of this phone and ultimately answer the question of whether this is the best budget phone to get right now. I'm also curious to see how it's gonna compare to the iPhone SE as in many ways, these phones are quite similar. They both have flagship processors from the uh, Apple processor, as well as of course that Tensor chip, but in a much more affordable uh, and compact design. So it'll be interesting to see how these two phones compare. So anyway guys, that's it for the unboxing and my initial impressions of this phone. Let me know if you have any questions or anything in particular that you'd like me to check out for my full review video. If you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my iPhone SE review as well as my S22 long-term review. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.